Well, new Bukayo Saka and Stade spotted all, not a, not a backup. I think he's a backup, not so. He's a backup. So, understudy and backup are the same. So, he's another Bukayo Saka understudy spotted by Arsenal. He goes by the name of Julian Brandit, who plays for Borussia Dortmund. Welcome to Brokani Media Football. How are you guys? And where are you watching us from? In this story, we are talking about the possible return of the former Arsenal player known as Ismail Benanka, who is playing at AC Milan. And Edu and Mikel Ateta are eyeing for a shock summer deal involving Florent Balogan and AC Milan midfielder Ismail Benanka. Remember Arsenal looking in for CDM to come in through and play with Thomas Partey. And they might look at Florent Balogan as a surplus to requirement and obviously take him where he's wanted and for them they get any player that they want smash the like button comment and share if at all you're watching us for the very first time and never to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that you do upload in on a daily good morning rock and david is my name and let's see close to 200 likes smashed onto the like button onto this video guys can we do it 200 likes 200 likes smashed onto the like button and last we are going to discuss about why why Julian Neglisman was sacked by Bayern Munich. I've had many of you talk, 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 talk. Other pundits talk about this time round. Oliver Kahn, one of the directors of Bayern Munich, has come out and really given us a reason as to why this 35-year-old manager has been sacked from the job. Yet Bayern was still in the Champions League, and we know how German and we know how Bayern Munich prefers to win the Champions League than anything else. You get? So, let's set this rolling. Now, I brought you a story that Moussa Diabe is one of the understudies of Bukayo Saka that Arsenal are really <coughs> eyeing. You get? So, the first time they're eyeing him, they've been eyeing him for a very, very long time. But, there is this man known as Brundit. I saw a story of him coming in from coming in from Christian Falk. Christian Falk works for Build in Germany and he's really a credible journalist. This story was put up uh, like 11 days ago and I said, all right, I would like to see whether it's whether the, whether there's going to be another development coming in through. And obviously the development has really shown up from Gianluca DiMazio and you know how Gianluca DiMazio is. He's in that ilk, all galaxy of <clears throat> Fabrizio Romano, David Austin, that level, that's where he really <clears throat> That's where he really settles in as a transfer journalist or transfer guru. And he told us that Arsenal still have interest in Moussa Diabe, the Liverpool star agent, are in contact with the club. However, it's worth nothing that Gunners are also interested in Borussia Dortmund Julian Brandit. The club has yet to make a decision on that front. So, that's what he told us. And, uh, Today, I think today or yesterday, I got a story coming in from <coughs> from Dimazio. Dimazio is really a credible journalist and he's one of those clear sources that you'll ever, ever want to listen to as far as deals are really concerned because he has been so much in this game. He works for, he's an international football reporter for Sky Sports. Obviously, he's a football transfer expert and has told us that it's definitely an option that Julian Brandit could join Arsenal. Certainly, he's a target for them. So, it's no longer something to lie about or to hide about. Arsenal are in need of a player to act as a backup or to act as a competitor for Bukayo Saka. Why? Saka plays very many games. You know, when you look at how many games Saka has played, you sometimes feel for the lad. You know, he's just 21 years of age, but he's playing very many games. He has played almost every Arsenal game in the league. He has played all the 27 games. He has played all the UEFA Europa League games. Though so, Some of them, he has been coming off the bench, but those are eight games for Bukayo Saka, adding them to 27. Tally is up to 35. After those games, I saw Bukayo Saka play in the game of Man City, in the FA Cup tie. You get, he played the entire 90 minutes. Those are 36 games. Um... I think he had to come on through in the Carabao Cup too when Arsenal was knocked out by Brighton, Bukayo Saka. I think Bukayo Saka so far has played close to 40 games for Arsenal. Now, <clears throat> when you add on the games he's playing for the national team, you're going back, he played, 
he played five games for Arsenal at the World Cup. You get he played the three games in the group stages, then he came up through and played um, in the round of 16 and quarter final. Those are five, those are 45 games. Uh, yesterday he played, I think, on, was it yesterday? It was Thursday. He played for England when they're taking on Italy. So, right now, Bukayo Saka has played 50 games plus ever since this season started. That's too much. And Arsenal has no player to act as his understudy or competitor to go in for him. And I think them going in for Julian Brandit, it's still another move. One will tell me, but Rokani, you are telling us Moussa Diabe, Julian Brandit, Rafinha, who is who? <clears throat> Let me tell you, if I told you watched all or nothing for Arsenal, you saw very well that the now the sporting director of Arsenal, by then he was the technical director of Arsenal, known as Edu Gaspar, was explaining the plan to Vinay, the CEO of Arsenal, and uh, Josh Kroenke, the co-chairman of Arsenal, on how the plan is for the transfers. They always target three players. <clears throat> they always target three players. And how does that happen? They have, like, Rafinha. We know that if at all Rafinha is a variable, Arsenal will go in for Rafinha. Then, they'll, they'll have Moussa Diabe or Brandit. If at all, that Rafinha deal falls, doesn't fall through. So, that's how Arsenal does it through. And according to their team, <coughs> the top team, they must be having two players competing for that position. Then in the academy even, there has to be a player whom they are looking at to come in through and obviously take on these other two players in the next two, three years to come at the club of Arsenal. So that's how Arsenal does its stuff. But Julian Brandit is a very good player. Trust me, the flair that he has is better than that of Moussa Diabe, according to me. You get, I've seen him play in different positions. That's another advantage he has over Moussa Diabe. He plays in different positions. He can play as a left attacking midfielder. You get, he can play as a central attacking midfielder. You understand? So after playing as a central attacking midfielder, <clears throat> he can also play as a left attacking midfielder. And he just finds himself into positions that everyone would like him to have. Sorry, every team would love to have him at, every team would love to have him at their, <clears throat> at their, at their exposure because he plays in various positions that can help you really do the needful. When you look at him, he plays in all the three attacking midfield positions. That's the lad, you get? And he's really deadly and dangerous. If I told you have seen him play, perfect cross on him, cuts inside very well, and uh, he can give you more than what Moussa Diabe gives you. That's it. And when you look at Moussa Diabe and him this season, <coughs> I have their stats in the for you. In the UEFA Champions League, Julian Brindit played seven games and scored one goal, zero assists. And then Moussa Diabe played six games in the Champions League and scored two goals. Yeah, he aged him there. Then when we go to the Bundesliga <coughs> this season, Julian Brindit has gone ahead to play 23 matches. He has scored eight goals and put in four assists. Then Moussa Diabe has to go on ahead to play 24 games, yeah, eight girls and four assists. So for that, they are level. They are level. In the DFB Pokal Cup, he has played two games, zero goals, zero assists for Moussa Diabe. In the DF, um, he played one match and scored zero goals. That is the lad for you. So when you look at these two people this season, uh, Julian Brandit has gone ahead to play <clears throat> has gone ahead to play 32 games. All right, he has nine goals and four assists. You get Moussa Diabe has gone ahead to play even playing the Europa League. Yeah, he has gone ahead to play. These are 10, 34, 35 games. He has scored 12 goals and put up four assists that is him so they are almost the same but Moussa Diabe is 23 years of age and Julian Brandit is 26 years of age 1.85 meters tall and obviously 
mm, Moussa Diabe is 1.7 meters tall. One will tell, one will ask me, Rokani, you are not talking about Rafinha in this conversation. Do you know why? <laughs> Rafinha is far much better than all of these. <laughs> That's it. If at all a chance is there for us not to sign Rafinha, they'll go all out for him. But if they don't get Rafinha, I think they'll settle down for one of the two. Julian Brandit or Moussa Diabe because they are almost in the same levels. But to me, I admire Julian Brandit more than Moussa Diabe. That's it. I even saw Moussa Diabe play yesterday when France was playing against Netherlands. They put four goals past Netherlands. He came on through and played some 20 minutes. He even scored a goal, but it was really <coughs> ruled out because he was offside. But Julian Brandit for me is really a talent that you would love to recon with at a club known as Arsenal. And the beauty of the two is that they've all played in the Champions League. And Arsenal is looking in for experienced players of gone who have who have tested who have tested that Champions League levels, who have tested the waters at the biggest club, <coughs> the biggest club, the biggest footballing club tournament in the world, that is the Champions League. So for that they draw. But <coughs> I think the big decider is going to be about money. <laughs> That's it. Julian Brandit, at close to 30 million pounds, they can get him from Borussia Dortmund and sign him at Arsenal. <laughs> That's it. But for Moussa Diabe, they would have to cough close to 50 million pounds. That's it. So I think that can be another barrier that can stop Moussa Diabe from joining Arsenal. And then Brandit, Julian, comes in through and obviously does the needful in there for you. But I want to really show you <clears throat> the other disadvantage that might stop Arsenal from maybe signing the player known as Julian Brandt. In the game of Chelsea, that Chelsea won 2 nil at the Stamford Bridge. He played only four minutes and got off. Obviously, he had a hamstring. That is Julian Brandt. And his injury record is really one of those that you wouldn't like to really recon with because I finally got it here and let me try to flash it on the screen and we we'll go through the injury record of Julian Brandit. Now, <clears throat> on the 8th of March, he pulled what we call a muscle fiber. Until now, there are 17 days, he has not yet returned. <laughs> That's it. So, <clears throat> on the 19th, on the 19th of September 2022, he had influenza. It kept him out for eight days. Um, <clears throat> he had a concussion on December 2nd, 2021. Kept him out for seven days. He had a muscle injury in 2021. In September 16th, 11 days. Coronavirus. But when you look at all the injuries getting, I don't see them as bad injuries because they don't keep him out for long this in he last he last found himself out for long in 2014 when he tore his angle ligament and that took him a month out those are 31 days <laughs> that is the lad so i think when you look at the injuries gate that he gets they are not really injuries that keep him out for long recently like the, the year of 20 the year of 2022 he found himself out once. You get? And that was eight days. In the year of 2021, that's when he had a concussion, muscle injury, and coronavirus. That's it. But the year of 2022, he found himself out when he really when he really tore his muscle. That's it. He had influenza. That's it. It kept him out for eight days. So I think that won't be something that will limit Mikel Ateta and Edu to sign the player. Not so. So let's wait and see how that is going to happen for a player known as Julian Brandit as Arsenal are looking at him as the Mikel, not the Mikel Ateta. It's the Bukayo Saka understudy at Arsenal. Why? There is a possibility or probability that Arsenal can get Rafinha. You get because Barcelona have to sell a player to really find themselves in position of gathering money to really, to really get uh, get position for Lionel Messi. Because as it stands, they look like they're going to get Messi, and if at all they get off Rafinha, Rafinha earns close to two hundred thousand pounds a week. You take him off, Arsenal gets you close to sixty or seventy million pounds some good money gotten in through that can be used to register Messi, according to me. So, and if I told you have Messi, <coughs> Messi can play off the left, the right side where Rafinha plays. He can play centrally. 
and he can come in through and obviously share a role with Lewandowski into that Barcelona side. So let's leave us that and let's go to another story coming in from Arsenal. Classio Mercato Web, all the way from Italy, are telling us that Arsenal and Edu are reportedly eyeing a shock summer deal involved. <coughs> Sorry about that. Arsenal and Edu are reportedly eyeing a summer shock deal involving foreign Balogan and AC Milan midfielder Ismail Benanka this summer. That's coming in from Classio Mercato. One of the sites, all the <coughs> news outlets from Italy that really have some credibility. And he's talking about a player playing in the Italian team known as AC Milan Benanka. Benanka was at Arsenal, he's Algerian. And uh, Arsenal have been linked to this player for some good period of time. And uh, AC Milan is one of those teams that are really willing to cash in for Faron Balogan. That's it. It looks for Arsenal, they might not be having Faron Balogan in their plans. That's it, because Ateta might be in need of a world-class striker. All he's looking at throws at Leandro as that person or player that can help him lead the line when he wants to rotate Edinketia or Jesus, or when Jesus or Linketia is missing in action, he can come in through and lead the line. And in their absentia, that is Jesus and Inketia, Trossard has proven Mikel Ateta right that he can do the job. So in that <clears throat> in that perspective, I think they might look at Balogan as a surplus to requirement and they might cash in for him and obviously getting a player known as Benanka as it stands as it stands Arsenal can give Laron Balogan to AC Milan then they get Benanka and the deal will be done and dusted why the buyout clause of Ismail Benanka is 50 million euros and I think at the level <coughs> that Balogan is firing in and at his age I think is 1920 he's worth 50 million euros. That's it. So I think it will be a very good deal for Arsenal because they have to spend a lot of money on central defensive midfielders. If they can get in Benanka, that means they've gone ahead to use one of their players they're having to really get that deal done and dusted and then go all out for Declan Rice as their other player that they really love. So I think it will be a wise move for Arsenal. It will be a wise move for Arsenal. Why? They have no space for Florent Balogan. That's it. Unless otherwise you're going to get shocked. That's it. But I think they don't have space for Florent Balogan at Arsenal. And when you look at Balogan, when you keep him at Arsenal right now, <clears throat> as a third striker, you won't really enjoy. Do you know why? He will demand for playing time as he has been away at Rennes, Rennes and he has been scoring goals. You get 27 games, he has 17 goals. He's going to hit 20 goals. And no Arsenal player is going to hit even to score 17 goals in the league. And I think no Arsenal player is going to over outscore him. So I think it's better for Arsenal to do that that way. And obviously sell the player and find him and find space for him where he deserves. Then lastly, let's talk a little bit about this manager that was sacked. That is Neglisman. The manager who was sacked from... <coughs> Bayern Munich and Bayern have today announced Thomas Tuchel as their new manager. Now, Oliver Kahn, you know him, is one of the top directors <clears throat> at the club of Bayern Munich. He has said, quality of our squad has shown less and less often. Since January, we played less and less successfully and attractively. Strong fluctuations in performance put our goals in danger this season, but also beyond the season, so we reacted. To me, I believe the reason as to why they sacked the man was simple. All is simple. They looked at how they played against PSG. <clears throat> and they were shocked. They were shocked. For the league, they knew he would win it because Boon... <clears throat> Borussia Dortmund will slip off because they are just three points ahead of Bayern Munich. You get? And Bayern would overturn that. But... I think when he talks about the fluctuation in their playing, he means how they played against PSG. Bayern gave PSG a chance in the first in the second leg during the first 45 minutes of the game 
to get back and if at all PSG capitalized on the chances they created Messi, Mbappe and very many others they would have formed themselves like two goals uh, two goals up ahead of Bayern Munich and they weighed in and said all right if we can put out such a display against a team known as a team known as PSG what of a team that has more quality <clears throat> and threats up front like Man City won't they tear won't they tear us apart then they looked around when there is a manager known as Thomas Tuchel who had gone to go ahead and really beat Man City in the finale of the Champions League but one thing they have forgotten is how that game transpired <clears throat> Man City had everything on the ball they had every chance to win the game but the only thing they lacked was a number nine to bury that ball at the back of the net and I don't see Bayern giving themselves a chance to knock out Man City out of the Champions League by signing Thomas Tuchel as their new manager to me I've never never believed in Tuchel that's it I've seen people hailing him but I don't see him as a manager that is really 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 good when it comes to both the league and the knockout tournaments if you are if you want a knockout tournament Tuko is the guy Tuko is the guy Thomas Tuko is the guy that's it if you want a manager who will balance the two I think I not balance the two the league and the knockout tournament he won't but I think Bayern are so much interested in winning the Champions League and if I told you told them at the board of, of Bayern that surrender <clears throat> the Bundesliga to Borussia Dortmund and win the Champions League I think they go with that option on any day so I think they sacked Nagelsmann for fear of being knocked out by City at the quarterfinals of the league so guys sorry of the Champions League thank you guys for watching through your reactions to new Bukaya new Bukayo Saka understudy sported that is Julian Brendit and tell me your thoughts about Florian Balogan swap for Ismail Benanka and lastly do you think Oliver Kahn is telling us the real reason as to why they sucked Neglisman may the Omadon bless you abundantly Rock and David is my name have a very good Saturday and good morning to everyone watching in the Mosley brothers and sisters Ramadan Mubarak I'm out